the cameras was a uh, focus on uh, three main areas. Mm -hmm. uh, areas where we feel we have a uh, uh, competitive advantage globally. So we have uh, started uh, this uh, campaign for coconut based oleochemicals. Ah, the yeah. first one. Philippines is still the biggest exporter of coconut. Mm -hmm. Coconut oil, once you take it into the oleochemical process, can actually replace a lot of uh, fuel products yeah. uh, or petroleum based products yeah. can be replaced with something made from coconut. We immediately have something green and sustainable. Yeah. Uh, there's also the area of um, colorants. We make uh, colorants for paint, for textiles, anything that goes into a liquid coloring medium. Third business would be our resin business. Yeah. The resin business. Uh, it's more about polymers. Uh, we produce uh, polystyrene, uh, polyester resins, and also water-based uh, emulsions. Yeah. And when you say green chemistry, you can talk about uh, uh, the process of green chemistry because uh, it means that uh, you use less resources to produce the same amount of output or the same resource and produce a lot more. Yeah. Here we're talking about the efficiencies and yeah. uh, uh, new production techniques. Yeah. We also talk about uh, using a more sustainable uh, raw material a feedstock, a replacement for crude oil, which we found in coconut oil. Yeah. Uh, when this law about, uh, we call it the Biofuels Act of 2006, when this law came into effect in uh, the year 2007, February, uh, it immediately mandated that all diesel should be replaced, sorry, all diesel should be mixed in with 1% uh, cocoa biodiesel. So you have immediately uh, a displacement of what you would import with 1% coconut base produced locally. So you're going to replace uh, your fuel consumption, diesel fuel consumption, with at least 5% uh, by 2015. So that's a very, very good uh, uh, example of uh, renewables replacing what is uh, fossil based. <laughs> Hypothetically, yeah. if you were to uh, uh, take all the coconuts and use it entirely for fuel, it might take up 20% of the diesel requirement. It is more expensive. Uh, we just quite, uh, we're just quite uh, happy that there are markets like uh, Japan, uh, North America, Canada, a lot of European countries who are willing to uh, uh, pay the premium and encourage uh, a wider adoption. Um, I think if you look at uh, consumers, um, they are a lot more willing to support something that is uh, uh, sustainable and green. When we said the exotic market, I think it was uh, a nicer way of describing the troubled markets. When they see someone would take the trouble of coming, braving all the, braving all the dangers, mm. they actually feel very... I don't know how you describe it, but uh, they feel very grateful that you take that risk. risk and time to go and see them. For investment, uh, if they have the Philippines uh, in their scope, it's a 100 million population market. Yeah. So as a consumer base, it's huge. Uh, they can also see Philippines as a, a regional base. Um, a regional base to cover Southeast Asia, which is fastest growing. Um, the cameras name, the image, and the uh, I guess the systems behind it that uh, make that possible is already in place. What I'd like to see is uh, perhaps uh, a lot more a more global network. Right. A more global network where we can uh, set up or replicate some of our activities elsewhere uh, to put up uh, uh, technical service 
facilities overseas uh, to render closer relations with with our clients. Mm -hmm. um, we we also like to capitalize on um, a lot of the things we can do for multinational companies. Uh, it's, it's a lot of things I like that uh, covers a lot of things, but uh, Kenneth happens to be in a lot of things.